and I was invited to speak at uh, this seminar, then I really thought, would I accept it? As uh, Gary Jacobs uh, explained, this is a very tricky topic. You can approach power from many different sides. I'm not an expert by my education in social power, but I've done a lot of research <coughs> since I accepted to, to speak here. And I learned again that when you go to social sciences, especially to sociology, everything is possible. I'm now only concentrating on the term social power. So power is defined as a possibility to, to, to affect, to influence others. And we can define two types of power generally. One is outcome power and another is a social power. There is a big difference between that. The ability, outcome power is ability on an actor to bring about or help bring about outcomes. To the difference of the social power, the ability of an actor to change the incentive structure of other actors in order to bring about outcomes. Both, are, uh, both result in some outcomes, but in different ways. To put it simply, we found this essence of power in capacity to produce effects. So, strictly talking on social power, clearly the essence of social power should be in capacity to produce effects through another self. The degree of influence that an individual, that's the difference, not force, influence, that an individual or organization has among their peers and within their society as a whole. The social power of a person or business often result in being copied by others, and such power can typically be credited to the level of the skill, knowledge, information or faith that they possess in a desirable area of expertise. The source of uh, social power is people, as Gary explained uh, in his uh, introduction speech. It is from people's aspiration, energy and capacity that society derives the power. When individual capacity is organized and channeled through a system, it becomes a social power. That is a difference to force power or outcome power. Uh, in this way, society is a huge reservoir of all our energy, skills, capacities, knowledge, in intelligence and aspiration. Such a power is a form of power that is found in society and within politics. While physical power relies upon strength to force another person to act, social power is found within the rules of society and laws of the land. That's a huge difference. It really, it really uses one-to-one uh, -one, uh, conflict to force others to act in a way they normally wouldn't do. The social power possessed by any individual or group cannot be adequately evaluated by the mere sum of individual forms of power possessed. On the other hand, going to the other extreme and lumping all forms of the social power together into a single concept such as social class also leads to error of social analysis. There are different uh, uh, definitions of the social power, but I found the most common is the French and Raven, which state that really a sort of base of the social power. And they recognize six, six such uh, uh, bases, legitimate, reward, expert, referent, uh, coercive, and information. Let me just say a few words on each of others. The legitimate power, that is, uh, for example, a president, prime minister, COE, and so on. Uh, this type of power, however, can be unpredictable and unstable. If you lose the title or position, your legitimate power can instantly disappear uh, because people were influenced by the position you held rather than by you. Also, the scope of your power is limited to situations that others believe you have a right to control. Reward power means uh, people are often able to give out rewards, uh, such as raises, promotion, and so on. The problem with this power base is that it may not be as strong as it first seems. You know, many rewards means nothing uh, now compared to what they meant earlier. Also, when you use up rewards, or when the rewards don't have enough perceived 
value your power of equals. Quercy power is opposite of reward, and this source of power is also problematic and can be abused. What's more, it can cause dissatisfaction or resentment among the people it's applied to. Threats and punishment are common coercive tools. Information power, having control over information that other send, uh, need or want, puts you in the powerful position. Having access to confidential financial, for example, reports is a good example of information power. In the modern economy, information is a particularly potent form of the power. You know that the power derives not from the information itself, that's very important, but from the having access to it and from being in a position to share, withhold, manipulate, distort or conceal it. With this type of power, one can use information to help others or as a weapon or a bargaining tool against them. Expert power, that's the one we are going to talk uh, in this course the most, uh, uh, thinking about the knowledge. When you have uh, knowledgeable and skills that enable you to understand the situation, suggest solution, use solid judgment and generally outperform others, people will listen to you, trust you and respect what you are. What's more, one can expect, expand own confidence, decisiveness and reputation from rational thinking in other subjects and issues. This is a good way to build and maintain expert power and to improve your leadership skill. One can use expert power as an effective foundation for leadership. I will do uh, this one. Referent power. Referent power comes from one person linking and respecting another and identifying with her in some way. Celebrities have reformed referent power, which is why they can influence everything from what people buy to which politician they elect. Referent power can be a big responsibility because one doesn't necessarily have to do anything to earn it. So it can be abused quite easily. Someone who is likable but who lacks integrity and honesty may rise the power and use the power to hurt and align that people as well as to gain a personal advantage. Now let me just uh, come to the end. Uh, just uh, considering these uh, uh, power bases, and understanding them as the different forms of the, uh, power, one can learn to use the positive ones while avoiding the negative power and uh, uh, distinguishing between bad and good in the power. Certainly, uh, there are many types of power. These six are bases of the power. There are, there are for example, different types of the power, you have to distinguish type of the power and basis of the power. And uh, this would be, as uh, Gary said, a long story to go through all of this. Thank you very much.